Is The Crimson Pirate my favorite movie of all time? No, of course not. But it's up there, maybe even in the top 10, depending on the weather or the time of day. Is it art? It's a pirate movie, not a Picasso. I first saw this movie when I was six or seven on the old Million Dollar Movie. Back then, families used to watch TV together. I don't know if they still do. It, it's been a while. Our dad had just purchased a brand new Zenith TV. It was a black and white model. Color was still a few years off, but it was one of the first that had a wireless remote. And suddenly, our dad has an itchy trigger finger. Flicking from one station to another drove us crazy. To his credit, though, Dad only flicked away when a commercial came on. But by the time you got back to the program, you missed a few things. Which brings us back to the Million Dollar Movie. When the Million Dollar Movie ran the Crimson Pirate five nights a week and twice on a weekend, I was in Buster Brown heaven. Now, when I talk about some of my favorite movies, even more so when I try to make a list of, say, my top 100 movies, I inevitably get caught up in a tug of war between sentimental childhood favorites and more adult-oriented fare. In such a situation, it's easy to find yourself trying to justify some of your choices. In the case of The Crimson Pirate, no justifications are needed. And while Fairbanks and Flynn may have sailed the Spanish main before him, Burt Lancaster and childhood pal Nick Cravat turned this pirate movie into a three-ring circus of outlandish gags and extraordinary action sequences. In fact, the entire third act is one extended action sequence. In many ways, it's a precursor to the big-budgeted action blockbusters we know today, and its worldwide success cemented Lancaster's clout in Hollywood for years to come. Once upon a time, there was a certain kind of New York street kid, usually blonde, usually Irish, but not exclusively. James Cagney was one, Russ Tamblin played one in West Side Story, and Burt Lancaster was probably the prime example of that type. Slum kids, some get out, some don't, same as always. Lancaster got out, and he took Nick Cravat with him from the circus to Hollywood, and by the time they got to Hollywood, they were seasoned pros. They understood performance, and they understood how to please an audience. And Lancaster understood that Hollywood was just another circus. But he never forgot where he came from. And it's nice to know that he took care of Nick Cravat and his family for life. In both The Crimson Pirate and The Flame and the Arrow, Nick Cravat plays the mute sidekick to the hero. Except they're more like brothers. You can feel the history between the two men, both on screen and off screen. Off screen, both were reputed to have fierce tempers. But on screen, both were very funny. And Nick was funny. He may not have been Chaplin, but I dug his act. And Burt Lancaster, was he a subtle actor? No, not always. But he was a pop off the screen movie star. And when you're a kid, that's what you want. I never wanted to grow up to be a good fellow but I wouldn't have minded being the Crimson Pirate. For five nights a week and twice on the weekends? Oh yeah, I'll see you around the campus.